In this lesson, some of the significant performance information provided by the flight management computer will be discussed. This will include the cost index, econ speed, altitude capability, optimum altitude, and the location of performance data in the event of total FMC failure. A cost index must be input every time you initialize the FMC. The FMC will use this cost index to compute the most economical climb, cruise, and ascent speeds for the scheduled flight when operating in economy mode. The factors affecting the total cost of each flight must first be determined for an airline to calculate the cost index. The factors which affect the cost of a flight can be segmented into time-related costs and fuel costs. Time-related costs are any costs which will be reduced by reducing the flight time. This reduction in flight time is accomplished by flying faster climb, cruise, and ascent speeds. Simply put, the faster you fly, the lower the time-related costs. For most airlines, portions of the maintenance costs are time-related. For some airlines, flight crew and cabin crew costs are also time-related. The chosen flight speeds will also affect the fuel costs. For each flight, there is a specified speed which will minimize the trip fuel and therefore minimize the fuel costs. This speed is determined by aerodynamics and affected by the engine characteristics of the airplane. The goal for an airline is to minimize the total cost of the flight. The total cost would be determined by adding the cost of fuel plus the cost of time. The speed which results in the lowest total cost is the most economical speed for the flight. This speed is called econ speed. Cost index is simply the parameter entered into the FMC so it can calculate the econ speed for climb, cruise, and descent. If your airline has low time-related costs or high fuel costs, a low cost index is used. This will result in a slower econ speed. If the time-related costs are high or fuel costs very low, a high cost index would be used. This will result in a faster econ speed. Only your airline can gather the information necessary to determine the best cost index for your operation. Typically, cost index is supplied as part of the dispatch papers or is set by company policy. This is the econ climb speed. It is the commanded speed if the economy mode has been selected and there is not a waypoint speed constraint, speed restriction, or transition altitude speed restriction active. This speed will provide the minimum total trip cost based on the cost index entered during FMC initialization. High weight or high cost index will result in a higher econ climb speed. As the airplane climbs to a higher altitude, the climb is flown at a constant Mach number. The FMC will select the Econ Cruise Mach number. This eliminates acceleration or deceleration in the transition from climb to cruise. Once attaining altitude, the FMC will fly the Econ Cruise speed. The econ cruise speed is a function of cost index, gross weight, altitude, and actual winds. This speed will change during the flight as fuel burns, the wind changes, or if a different altitude is selected.
This speed can vary from a low of the maximum range cruise speed, MRC, at a cost index of zero, to the VNAV limit or cruise thrust speed at a high cost index. Since MRC is the maximum range cruise speed, flying this speed results in the minimum trip fuel and therefore the maximum range. This occurs at the speed where the fuel mileage is the greatest. Another speed you may be familiar with is LRC, the long range cruise speed. This speed is defined as the Mach number where the fuel mileage is 99% of the maximum. Flying at LRC results in a 10 to 25 knot increase in ground speed for about 1% increase in trip fuel. On the 737-800 airplane, LRC is approximately a Mach number of 77 when cruising near optimum altitude. For example, increasing the speed from 77 to 785, about 10 knots, will increase the trip fuel by about 4 to 5 percent at normal cruise conditions. At high cost indexes, the airplane speed may be limited by the VNAV speed limit or the cruise thrust limit. The VNAV speed limit is VMO minus 5 knots. The cruise thrust limit is the speed where the thrust required for level flight equals the maximum cruise thrust available. As temperature increases, the cruise thrust limited Mach number will decrease. After the top of descent, the vertical descent path necessary to meet the first altitude constraint on the legs page at idle thrust results in the descent speed. The target speed is displayed for planning purposes only. As the airplane descends, the highlighted speed will change from the target Mach number to the target IAS. This crossover occurs when the IAS exceeds the target Mach number as the result of the change in altitude. The target IAS is a function of the cost index only. Another performance function of the FMC is to compute the optimum and maximum altitude for the airplane. During normal operations, when the FMC is operating in econ mode, the optimum altitude displayed is the most economic altitude for the total trip cost. Therefore, this optimum altitude is a function of cost index and airplane weight. If the airplane is operating in a speed control mode, such as at a constant Mach number or at LRC, this optimum altitude is the altitude which will result in the minimum trip fuel. As the optimum altitude increases with decreasing fuel on board, a continuously climbing cruise would be the most cost effective. But as we all know, ATC will not allow this. In place of a climbing cruise for cost efficiency, choose an initial cruise altitude above the initial optimum for the flight. Remain at this cruise altitude until the optimum altitude has increased above your current altitude sufficiently, then commence a step climb to the highest optimum altitude for the flight. The FMC provides data for crew evaluation for a manually entered step climb altitude on the cruise page of the CDU. This data includes the predicted cost savings or penalty associated with the step climb to the crew entered altitude and the first possible step climb point based on gross weight. The optimum altitude based on the current gross weight is continuously displayed.
The ideal flight path will always keep the airplane within 2,000 feet of the optimum altitude to maximize efficiency. The FMC also displays the maximum possible altitude for crew reference at the current target speed. The maximum altitude is the more limiting of the thrust limited altitude, the maneuver margin limited altitude, or the maximum operating altitude. The thrust limited altitude is the highest altitude the airplane can maintain at the maximum cruise thrust rating or climb to at the maximum climb thrust rating. It is dependent on OAT. This calculation of thrust limited altitude is based on residual rate of climb of 100 feet per minute for crews and 300 feet per minute for the climb phase of flight. This residual climb rates can be altered on the ground only through an FMC maintenance pay. In general, the thrust limited altitude as a function of an outside air temperature will be at least 2,000 feet above the optimum altitude where the temperature is ISA plus 15 degrees Celsius. As previously stated, the maximum altitude is also limited by the maneuver margin limited altitude. The maneuver margin limited altitude is determined by computing the G margin to initial buffet at the selected altitude and speed. This computed margin is then compared to the airline selected minimum G margin. The default for the airline selected maneuver margin is 1.3 G's. If the FMC computes a margin to initial buffet at the selected altitude and speed that is smaller than the airline selected margin, the selected altitude will not be allowed. A 1.2 G margin is the same as a steady 34 degree bank turn. A 1.3 G margin is the same as a steady 39 degree bank turn. If an engine failure occurs in flight, the engine out cruise page can be accessed by selecting the engine out prompt on the cruise page. This page displays non-executable advisory data only, and the execute key remains extinguished. The FMC computed maximum altitude for single engine operation is displayed and is based on a company specified rate of climb at maximum continuous thrust with one engine inoperative. The default climb rate is 100 feet per minute. If terrain clearance is a potential problem, the engine out drift down speed should be flown. The dispatch requirements for terrain clearance are based on this speed. A faster drift down speed will steepen the descent path and result in a lower level off altitude. To be a legal dispatch, a net drift down profile must be able to clear all terrain and obstacles by at least 2,000 feet within five statute miles to either side of the flight track. After drift down, the net profile must result in a level off altitude that provides at least 1,000 feet of obstacle and terrain clearance. The FAA requires that a net engine inoperative flight path be able to meet all obstacle and terrain clearance requirements. This net flight path is 1.1% of the drift down gradient lower than the actual drift down profile. The FMC will provide you with this advisory engine out speed and predicted maximum altitude of the engine out cruise page. If an engine failure has been preceded by an FMC failure, the pilot can get the same data from pages in the Performance In-Flight section of the Airplane Operations Manual. On the 737 airplane, the FMC is not required for dispatch. If the FMC performance functions are lost during flight, 
the pilot can revert to using the performance data in the performance in-flight section of the Boeing Operations Manual. This section contains the performance information normally supplied by the FMC. This includes things like engine thrust setting information, cruise data, altitude capability, landing reference speeds, and so on. This performance section also includes landing performance data such as slippery runway, landing distance, non-normal configuration landing distance, and brake cooling. The charts in this performance in-flight section are tabular. The chart is used by entering with the known airplane conditions and reading the desired information. On some charts, the desired information is read at a reference condition and then must be adjusted for conditions that are off-reference, as in this example. One last comment on the FMC provided performance. The takeoff reference page provides FMC the calculated values for V1, VR, and V2. These speeds are just like the speeds you are used to seeing in the Quick Reference Handbook. They are valid for a standard balanced fuel length takeoff weight. The FMC determined V speeds do not include clearway or stopway in the calculations. If the takeoff is being conducted on a slippery or contaminated runway, the FMC provided V1 speed is not valid. If improved climb techniques are used, all three speeds, V1, VR, and V2, must be adjusted. In all these special cases, the flight crew must get the takeoff speeds from dispatch.